Let's go another round with paper. Illustrations by me. So after doing that last Tommy Mueller watercolor paper review, I looked at it and said, oh yeah, I really love that heavy 300 pound rough paper. And I do, it was beautiful paper. I went to look for it on Amazon to get the affiliate link that I put below. 50 bucks for 10 sheets. Now I like to cut them in half, so they're nine by 12. They're actually a little bit more than that. They're nine and a half by 12.6, but I like to cut them in half. So you'd have a nine and a half by 6.3. We'll just say a nine by six. That's what I usually work in anyway. That's fine for me. You get 20 sheets that way, still $50. But it's $2.53 a sheet. That's a little bit different. But there are some other alternatives. And I don't think I've ever properly reviewed them here on the channel. So one of them is the Fluid 300 watercolor paper. I do like that paper. I do use the cold press. Now here's what I recommend. Because you like, if I like to go smaller, so if you like to go smaller, get the smaller blocks of that. Because if you get the big block, you're paying like $56 for 10 sheets, just like the other one. That's just how much the heavyweight paper costs. But if you buy the little 8x8 blocks, you can get one of them for $20. That brings it down to $2 a sheet instead of $250 with the other one. And you just get two of those, you spend $40 instead of spending $50 or $56 if you got the big one of the fluid. So, Fluid 100, 100% 100 cotton watercolor paper, that's what the 100 means. The 300 pound, but it's cold press, it's not rough. I do like the rough paper, but it's cold press and it works okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go through some testing, some things that I do where I do the tape and see how much rips off with the tape. I'll do some masking fluid just to test it out and see how it works. And one of the things I really like about doing these reviews is that I'm not tied to anyone. I have no company affiliation at all. So I can easily tell you the best and the worst things about the paper. I have no problems doing that. I hope you understand that and I hope you enjoy watching these types of review videos where I get to tear into these companies a little bit because I enjoy doing that. And stay tuned until the end. Someone went on the website and they actually used the reference photos that I have there to make a drawing. I'm so honored to, to see that. I'm so happy to see that someone's actually going there and using it for that reason. We'll look at that as well. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna start right out of the gate destroying a piece of paper. I didn't wanna do that, but I didn't really think it would be this bad. I actually thought it would work. I've used tape on there before and it's not as bad, or I didn't think it was as bad as what you just see here, but that's okay, don't worry about it. It's okay, I'm going to go ahead and do another drawing without using the tape, without using the masking fluid. And there is another masking fluid that I can probably use. Well, first of all, let me start with this. There's another tape that I could use that I actually have. That's the um, the Scotch Artist Tape. I think it's by 3M. And that's just a very, that's a very light tack paper. It's very weird. It's You put it on the page, it almost feels like it's gonna fall off the page. Sometimes the water leaks underneath, so I don't, and a lot sometimes, so I don't tend to use that as much, but I'm going to probably use that a little bit more in the future to avoid this problem when I use watercolor paper. Because this painter's tape, although I use it on certain things and it works fine, other times it just tears the crap out of the edge of the page, and I don't want to do that, especially if I'm going to sell the piece. So Now, the masking fluid, there's a new Schmincke masking fluid that comes in a little tube. Here's the biggest problem I see with it though. It comes with a very fine point applicator. I don't have it, but I'm gonna get it to try it. It comes with a very fine point applicator. The problem I see with that is even in this bottle, when I open it up and I use it and I put it away for a while, I when I open it back up, there's a big chunk of dried stuff in there that I've gotta rip out and then I can use the masking fluid underneath. The problem I see with that little fine applicator is how am I going to get that stuff out? Even if I open the tube, it's a very small opening. I don't know if I can get in there and rip it out the way that I should. So I don't know if it's going to work. But it's supposed to work very well on paper because it's more like just a, a very fine, I guess a fine latex. But they're all latex. That's just what it is, a liquid latex. But anyway, it's supposed to work better. A lot of people swear by it. They say that it's wonderful. I will give it a shot. 
it's a little pricey for a little tube, but I'm going to, as much as I use it, uh, it'll last me forever. I'll just get the bottle and it'll last me just however long. I'll do a separate review on that whenever I do get it. So I spent some time on this and put it together and then ripped it apart and it was not a good experience. Let's put it that way. So I start the same way I always do. I use my fingers. I know a lot of people don't like that, but that's what I use because I go back over with my fingers anyway and feel if I'm pulling it off. If I use the gum eraser, I can't really tell if it's coming off and sometimes I rip through the paper with the eraser. So I don't want to do that. So I use my fingers. It's not a big deal. And then I take it all off and it, it felt at first like I everything was do, were doing okay. It felt like it was working just fine until I went and put some more watercolor in those open spots and saw the devastation that took place. And you can see how splotchy it is when I do that. I put the color in there and I'm just trying to put color over color, see if I can ignore it, see if I can just do something different with it or give it a different texture. I see that the paper's ripped a little bit. Let me see if I can fix it, at least work with it. And it turns out I can't. So now you have seen me in many sketchbooks put this blue tape on the paper and I pull it off and a little bit comes off once in a while, but not this kind of devastation that happens here. Matter of fact, when I use the Etcher Hot Press book, the standard Etcher book with the hot press paper in it, I used some old masking fluid that was actually, it had, at least in my opinion, it went bad and was no longer usable. I couldn't use it for anything. And it tore the paper a little bit, but not terrible. I was still able to work with it. And then I used some of this, this stuff here and the same masking fluid I used here. That worked pretty good. It wasn't that bad. But once I started putting it on any other paper, it just for some reason is tearing. You can see on the tape how it tears off. It's terrible. The uh, the masking fluid is horrible. It just destroys the paper. So I'm going to scrap this whole thing and start over. I started to show you the colors that I was going to use. I put the little palette on the side. But there were so many colors I was mixing off camera because I didn't want to just to get rid of these off of the palette because I was going to use them in another drawing. So I left them on the palette and I said, you know what, I'm just going to move this over, use a different palette, and it was off screen, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. Now let's actually get to the actual reviewing of how the paper acts with watercolor. That's the main focus. Not everyone uses tape. Not everyone uses masking fluid. No one uses salt. So I'm going to go into a normal drawing that I normally do where I put very thick layers. I put a lot of color on the page. I go in with a pen. I start scratching away at it. And that's how I use it. Now, I want to say normal 300 pound watercolor paper, that is thirsty paper. It sucks the water in quickly. Now, if you know anything about fluid 100 watercolor paper, you know that the hot press once it sucks up that water and once it, it that line that hard edge is there in that watercolor you cannot reactivate it very easily it pretty much is stuck in place now i will say that with the 300 pound cold press watercolor paper you can activate those edges a little bit easier and it's easier to add go back in add some more of the same color and not see the hard edge it's it's I've did that many times in this piece. I don't know if you pay attention or if you can see it. I am doing it a little bit quicker than normal, but it's the same thing. I just, I, it's easier to activate the edges and go ahead and add some more color, widen some spots if you need to. And I'm telling you, it dries a lot quicker because that paper sucks up that water. That 300 pound, it's a, it's a water hog. It sucks it up. So but it acts very nicely. It acts very wonderfully. I was very happy with the results. I didn't mind using, not only did I not mind using it, I love to use this paper. I've never really tested it with the whole tape and masking fluid thing, but the paper itself, it works wonderfully for normal watercolor paintings. I don't see a problem with it at all. And again, everybody works things differently. So I'm showing you a couple of things that I do, but it may not be the way that you work. And don't let any, I don't care, YouTube or anybody tell you, any other artist tell you that the paper is best for the way that you work. 
you have to try it out and see if it works as well for you as it does for someone else or maybe not as well for you as it would for someone else you have no idea it depends on your techniques and what you're doing I love this paper I again I love the thicker paper so I like the 300 pounds that that paper that texture and that thickness and it's just wonderful and this is a little bit less textured so you can go in with pen and get some cleaner lines a little bit more detail it's no big deal you see even some of the dry brush effects that I tried to get in this was not as dry brush it, it was a little bit less than what you would normally get on a cold press watercolor paper because it has a little less texture you'll see I'm gonna do another I know you're not you don't want it but there's gonna be another test with another 300 pound watercolor paper that I'm gonna do here shortly I guess and when I use that one it has a little bit more texture and it just acts a little bit differently on the page that's all the watercolor does but it's the same thing it, it's you'll see you'll see how that goes and I saw something else absurd people were putting saran wrap on their watercolor paint now listen you're putting salt on it you're putting saran wrap on it you're probably drinking the paint water you have a whole meal the way you're doing this this is not what I use art for I'm not trying to satiate my hunger I just want to create stuff so you do what you want but I'm not why not just why do you stop there just throw some pepper on there maybe you want to pepper it up a little bit maybe put some nice jalapeno peppers on across of it and see if it gets a little spicy I don't know all I'm saying is I use watercolor to paint with that's what how I use it I'm not trying to eat anything you see some of these artists on YouTube and you can't tell is it an art channel or is it a food channel you have no idea because they're using all the same ingredients now doing this I just want to point something out okay it, it no matter what I ever review just understand I'm using it the way that I use it there's really no such thing as the best art supply of any one thing there there's many many bad ones but there's many many good ones and when you hear people say oh this is the best watercolor paper it depends on what application they're using what their desired result is same thing when you're talking about pens there's different ap applications sometimes the, there's a service requirement for the pen you have to service it continuously to keep it working some pens you just pop open six months later and they work that depends there's there's different types of like they're gonna share their likes and dislikes every artist will do that they'll say I like this I don't like this and some people get paid to say that I'm not getting paid from anyone you can be assured of that if an artist says that something is bad like the paper is bad then anyone who looks up to that artist is not going to use that paper because they're well they're better than me and if they say it's bad then how bad is it going to be for me so but if they tell you the reason that it's bad then that may not apply to you for example if 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 you never use tape this paper is wonderful and amazing if you use masking fluid I'd say don't use it it's not worth tearing up the paper and getting frustrated and ruining something because you use some masking fluid there are other papers that work better for that but if you don't do that there's nothing wrong with this paper you could put layers and layers on it it holds a ton of a wash it doesn't warp it doesn't distort there's no buckling it's heavyweight paper so for that it's great I mean there would be different probably no one wants their paper to fall apart so if you're putting layers and layers on you don't want it to fall apart and pull up the fibers if you see that maybe that's not for you but maybe you don't use layers and layers maybe you use one or two layers and then you use ink or you use color pencil or something on top of it and that doesn't even bother you so then that paper would be fine for you you really have to weigh everything out for yourself don't take anyone's what this is good for and I'll tell you why I do these the reason that I do these is because I want you to just see the basic techniques that I'm using in case you use the same techniques that's why I show you I use tape so I show you what happens to the paper when you use tape because that's what I use I use masking fluid not a lot but on occasion I do 
So I show it to you so that you can see if you're going to use masking fluid. I like to experiment with masking fluid. That's what it is. So if I, once in a while I get in the mood to use it and I just want to use it. And I wouldn't use it on this paper. That's all I'm saying. There's other paper that it would work on. I'm saying this one I wouldn't use it for. So I'm showing you some techniques that I use. But really, if you use, do something different, you're going to have to try it yourself and test out your, what your techniques and see if it works. So thumbs up the video if you're going to get some paper and try your techniques on it the way that you do it and you're gonna ignore all of us YouTube morons that don't know what we're talking about because we don't know your technique and we're telling you what's good and what's not good based on what we do instead of based on what you do which is the dumb thing to do. Okay, so this first one from Susanna Steffel or you'd know her as an account here on the channel and she went ahead and used one of those reference photos of that kestrel and she drew something from the reference photos and I'm very happy about that. This will be up on the site. She's going to get her own portfolio to start that and start putting some stuff up that she's done. So thank you so much Anna for participating and sending in a drawing from one of the reference photos off the site. And now we're going to look at the actual site. You go here, you go to the viewer art. This is illustrationsbypeat.com. You go scroll down till you find the artist you want to look at. I'm going to show you, you just added some extras, so we're going to show you this. You go over to this portfolio here, right up here. You click on that. It'll open up all of his art. So this is his page. You scroll down. You can see the art that he's submitted so far. Beautiful artwork. I absolutely love his artwork. It looks so detailed. Very interesting stuff. And then up at the top there, you see where to find him. There's his YouTube, and then there's his Instagram, and you can always go there and check him out. So I encourage more of you to send in some artwork. I would love to put your art up on the, the page there, up on the website, so that other people can enjoy your art as well. If they happen to go there, there's not a whole lot of traffic right now, but we're building. Things are happening. I'm seeing more visitors every day. So you want to get your stuff up there? I would love to put your stuff up there. And then show people where to find you, how to get to you. So if you would, go ahead and submit that. Who do you submit it to? You go down to the website, and then you click the button that says that you want to submit artwork. It's on that viewer art page. Just put your name and just say, I'd like to submit some art, and then hit send. It'll send it to me, and I'll send you a message of where to actually send the art and I also give you a little disclaimer that you still own the artwork and just displaying it for you. You retain all licenses to it. And then you, I put it up on the site. It's a wonderful thing. And I'd love to do that for more of you. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.